asyncletism and why does it matter? The parameters to assess the progress of labor are well known. In the first stage, importance is given to the rate of cervical dilatation. And in the second stage, the emphasis is on descent of the fetal head. In the second stage, the pelvic phase is probably the most difficult segment of labor to assess. The reasons for delay in the second stage are well known, particularly disproportion and deflection. But there is one more entity and that is asyncletism, which may not be readily appreciable. I have made this video to familiarize the obstetrician with this concept and I will also demonstrate my approach to correcting asyncletism on a maternal pelvis model and fetal skull model with the use of parallel forceps. How is asyncletism named? Well, it depends on which parietal bone is more readily palpable. If the sagittal suture is more towards the back, towards the sacral promontory, the anterior parietal bone will be more easily felt and this is called anterior asyncletism or neglis obliquity. Conversely, if the sagittal suture is more towards the front, towards the pubic symphysis, the posterior parietal bone is going to be more easily palpable and this is called posterior asyncletism or Litzman's obliquity. This is a fetus who is in labor with a cephalic presentation. As labor progresses, there is going to be descent and promotion of flexion. Here it is depicted that the sagittal suture is exactly midway between the pubic symphysis anteriorly and the sacral promontory posteriorly. However, this rarely ever happens in real life. Usually, the sagittal suture is tilted anteriorly or it may be tilted posteriorly and this is called asyncletism. Asyncletism is a natural mechanism by which the fetus navigates the pelvic canal. However, an excess of it can lead to a delay in the second stage. 